you see in this case we've got um, one, two, three, four, five point five milliseconds. Okay, have plenty of time to charge. But if the engine speed increases, that line will shorten the amount of time we have to do. Will shorten. Whereas this pattern, because it's linked to the the electrical conductance of the coil and the time it takes for it to charge up and to dissipate the spark, that's fixed to that. So we actually start running out of time and we start running out of energy. So this would be 100% saturation of the primary, as the RPM increases, we're going to get less and less percentage saturation of the primary. And if we put less and less saturation of the primary, we're going to have a weaker output. Okay, so at high RPM, this sort of runs out of steam. Now, the other problem is, is because of the mutual inductance, if we have greater demands on here, and this is, as I say, this voltage is determined by the spark plug gap and the resistance the spark resistance in that gap is determined by the pressure and the temperature so if we increase the uh, compression ratio we're going to demand more from the uh, ignition secondary system okay we're going to have to uh, put more um, put more time into the um, into the dwell period to get more saturation because uh, we're going to be pulling more out of the other end so what we have, what we used to use, is a twin point distributor. And it had two sets of points wired in parallel with each other. Um, the other set of points was a few degrees off. So this one opens. When this one opens, the spark occurs because both points are open. So, okay, so when you open one point, the spark occurs. But as the rotor goes around, this one closes before this one. Okay? And when this one closes, it's a closed circuit and the coil goes in between here and positive and can charge up. So what you're doing is you're closing one set of points earlier than this could close and you're inclu increasing the amount of degrees that you can have um, dwell time or you can have the coil charging up for instead of a single set of points. So what you would have is, an, is what I call an asymmetrical opening and closing period. Whereas if you have one set of points, the amount of degrees one side of the centre of that lobe it, it closed would be the same as the amount of degrees on the other side it opened for. Okay, so in this case we've got a few degrees off on on the other set. Um, then um, the effect because they're both in parallel. Okay, the effect is is that one opens when the first one opens earlier. It doesn't matter, it doesn't make any difference because the other one's still closed. But when this one opens a little bit later, it causes the spark, and then this one opens, closes a little bit earlier. So the critical um, dwell time is, is the angle that these points close at before the angle these points open at, okay, which is greater than, greater than it would be with one set of points. So this would give you uh, an increased dwell angle in twin points. And to set those, what you would do is you would use a dwell meter, a little piece of paper inside one set of points, and a thick enough piece of paper to hold it back away so that the lobe, so the cam runner wouldn't touch any lobe. Because if it touched any lobe, the piece of paper would fall out. So you put a thick enough one in it to push the arm right back. Not till it's touching the screw though, because it will be shorted out. Um, and then this could spin free of this one. So you've only got this one set of points. So you start it up and run it with one set of points. You use the dwell angle meter, and then you set the gap on this to satisfy exactly the right dwell that you want. Then you take the piece of paper out of here and you put it in this one, and then you start it up again and you set these points to exactly the same dwell angle as you had for these set of points. And then you take the piece of paper out of there and you start it up and you've got combined both points which will give you which will express a different dwell angle than only one set of points a longer dwell angle and then you set the ignition timing based on um, you know the timing light which will be when the first set of points opens when the second set of points opens for the spark to occur we'll send the we'll flash the light on the timing mark so that's how you set twin point distributors by the way if you ever have to do it I'll just cover these um, scope patterns first um, in a bit, little bit more detail. Um.
we had various patterns one was superimposed that's all uh well, one two three four here yeah, we've got a v8 eight cylinder there so we've got the same as that spark line i showed you before the single one and then we've got eight of them and if we superimposed them over the top of each other we could see the the difference between them and see any any jittering here which could all be, also be seen as a raster so that's in a that's in a row one above the other and you can see each cylinder so you can test you can see the difference between there you know if you put it onto a superimposed and they were jumping all around um, visibly then you could actually see there so you could see any outliers on this one and whereas this one you could actually then pick which one it was that was different so if you had different if you if this was jumping around okay and you had different closing times on the points you might have a bent roto um, in the um, distributor which is possible or a worn out one at least um, thrashing about which is possible because the um, the way the mechanical advance works um, and this uh, your oscillation lines and your burn times um, you could see on the time base so that was more a time base thing whereas the parade uh, was all of those single lines side by side so in firing order of the uh, of the engine okay in the firing order and they would give you that single spark line rising uh, and that is the potential of crossing the um, the spark gap okay that peak of that line and you can see the difference between cylinders a 10 kV there um, yeah that's a 10 kV pattern there um, and we've got them idling at 10 kV this one's a little bit below this one's a little bit high so the high ones mean that you've got you know a high resistance might be a bad spark plug lead uh, or the like whereas when you've got a low voltage low potential voltage it means the lead might be shorted out because of a a, uh, a closed up spark plug gap or a failed uh, you know shorted out spark plug gap so shorting it brings the potential voltage down because it doesn't take as much voltage to jump over a shorted plug whereas uh, an open lead or something like that um, or a very wide plug gap um, would be expressed as a high voltage so if all the leads were good and everything else was good this could actually tell you if the thing had worn plugs because these would be relative to the gap in each of the plugs and the discrepancies between them so there's a little bit of interpretation but um, with these scopes you could um, actually see what was going on enough to be able to then go and um, proceed to test certain things one after the other until you potentially find a fault and then go back to the scope and look at the pattern again and make sure it's it's all performing okay uh i think we'll uh that'll do for today and i think the next one we'll get on um actually that's gone over two videos so um yeah i think we'll make that over two videos and the next one um what we're going to do next is I think we're going to cover the motorcycle uh, points type coils um, and twin lead um, dead spark systems where you've got two spark bugs running off uh, uh, a single coil with two leads coming out of it and you have uh, on a four cylinder motorcycle older ones you have two sets of points um, operating on the uh, crankshaft and we'll also cover the twins that have two coils with a uh, two sets of points operating on the camshaft um, yeah anyway we'll get into that next um, but I uh, thought I'd cover that scope stuff with you and because of the lingering questions I had to answer that thing about the inductance um, and the mutual inductance and how you know um, the capacitor is tuned to the inductance of both both the windings and the whole coil um, and it's not just the primary and um, you know because of that that's because of the mutual inductance so that's how the how the inductive tick can come back through the system to then hit the condensers so that it's reflected back in the other direction okay and that's how it does it because these two are bonded by inductance mutual inductance uh, and that should answer any other questions if you've got any specific questions about that um, by all means um, hit the comment section and um, yeah just cover them um, but uh, so next we'll get into motorcycle and uh, twin lead coils and uh, another type of motorcycle one which is uh, uh, got a points and uh, an AC magneto kind of arrangement which um, I'll get into okay well that'll do for today 
Okay. Ik ken ik, ja.